I could just touch the hem of his garment. I want to thank our brothers on Men's Day this year. And their theme, standing on men of God, standing on solid ground. May not said it right, but that's close enough. <laughs> but while standing on solid ground, men of St. Bernardine's and visitors, we also have to remember to reach out and reach down for those on shaky ground and pull them up and give them the word of God. We have so many that are on shaky grounds. And I know I can testify to that from some parts of my life. I was on shaky grounds. But I'm here to tell you today, God, and y'all, that as your brother, I'm trying to keep both feet on shaky ground. Off of shaky ground, please. <laughs> Sometimes it's so easy to go back to that. <laughs> but I don't want to go back. There's no turning around. I want to try to preach a little bit about uh, something that happened in the readings today. We hear two stories of two widows. First from the first reading in the gospel. Though separated by many, many years, the readings teach us the same lesson of trusting and letting go and let God be God. And I won't be long this morning, church, but I don't know if the Spirit got anything to add to this. So I would like to ask all of you for your participation in this homily. I ask all of you to reach into your pockets or purse, take out two coins, no matter what they are, and hold them in your hand. Can we do that, church? Two coins. If you don't have one to rub against another, just bring one of them. We take food stamps and debit. <laughs> Are we ready? Don't let go of these coins. I will tell you, tell you later what to do with them. The lectionary reading today only gives us part of the first widow's story. <clears throat> Therefore, in order to get the full meaning from the reading from 1 Kings 17, 1 to 13, let us hear the full story. It begins with Elijah finding out that King Ahab and his people are worshiping their own prosperity and wealth, their own mammon, wealth, money, praise, and greed. So Elijah prays to the one true God to cease the rain in order that Ahab would learn that all we have comes from God to whom we must plus place our trust. The story continues. The rain ceases. Drought takes over the land for three and a half years. Eventually, even the stream that God gave Elijah to quench his daily thirst ran dry, and the source of his food vanished. So God brought Elijah to the city of Zarephath, where he meets a widow. Like many others, the widow is running out of food and water. Elijah asked her to share her last meal with him. <clears throat> she tells Elijah that she was in the process of preparing her last meal for she and her son, and then they will both die. The widow, trusting that God would provide, shared her last meal with Elijah. You know, church, the widow let go of all she had. But listen to this. She trusted. This allowed her to let go so that God could give her much more. That's the God we serve, church. For the following year, Elijah, the widow, and her son ate which they required, required from a single jar of flour and a jug of oil. I remember one year at the New Year's Day dinner 
you may have heard this, that we had more people than we anticipated and only had two hams. We start slicing those hams and slicing the hams, and not real thin pieces, but good pieces, but that ham didn't seem to run out. Everybody got all the ham they wanted, and we had some left over. That's the kind of God, where if you trust in him, he will bring you through that. The widow was favored in her response to the prophet's need and her ability to let go and trust God. In the second part of today's gospel, Mark 12, 41 through 44, we hear Mark's story of Jesus' last visit to the temple, a place now divided into courts of worthiness rather than a place centered on God. At this point, the temple is the social economic center of the city, accounting for over 90% of its revenue. Thus, Jesus even calls the temple the treasury. It was designed to keep the rich in and the poor and widows out. So we hear that Jesus and his disciples deliberately take a seat in full view of the collection box, and they watched as each person dropped in their donations. When the service ended, Jesus pointed out the poor widow who put all she had into the treasury. Two coins worth about a penny in today's currency. Just as the widow in the first reading, she placed her trust in God. She let go of all she had, allowing for God to provide. It is this emptying of all she had, represented by two coins, that Jesus praised her above the scribes who still held on to their own self-worth as being the most important. So, church, how does these readings speak to us today? At times, do we find it very easy to get very comfortable with our surroundings, to be in control, to have things just the way we want them? Society filled with a barrage of advertising and so-called commercial conventional wisdom reinforces the message each day for our need to have and want more. We feel that we need to have all the latest gaps, gadgets, the biggest cars, the latest iPhone, the biggest flat screen TV. And I remember that the last couple of weeks I've been talking about my TV going up and I was looking at larger TVs but it's working, but what would I need with another one? And I had to stop myself when I was doing this homily and say, I'm preaching to me again. <laughs> God knows how to do that. Of course, in the finest clothes so that we can strut around so that everyone knows how well we are doing in life. Today's culture reminds us that we are measured by what we have and that we always need more. I won't be long, church. So, prevent us, so what prevents us from giving our time, our treasures to God's work? Could it be the fear of giving up control of our lives and letting God take over? It becomes very easy for us to spend our lives building our personal kingdoms, holding on to our own treasures and not letting go. Yet, church, the message Jesus gives us today is that we must let go. We must empty ourselves of our desires for worldly goods. You know, sometimes I think I went into the wrong business. I should have gone into the storage business. How many people do you know who use that business to store away their treasures, but they're soon forgotten? and many times never used again. We have many people in this city who could use those things that we're not going to use again. We must be completely free so that we can accept God's invitation to participate in something bigger than you and me. Spirituality is about letting go. It's about letting go and putting our trust in God 
and allowing God to work within us and we in him. We pray at each Mass for thy kingdom to come, which requires in turn for each of us to let our personal kingdoms go. So how do we begin this process of letting go? We turn to the two coins in order to move away from the desire of holding on to the material world, to be able to let go of our wants and desires and to cease focusing on the conventional wisdom that in this popular culture. It is the two coins that the widow holds which represents the two commandments that Jesus gives us in the passage which precedes today's gospel. We must love the Lord our God with all our hearts, souls, minds, and strength, and love our neighbors as ourselves. Church, there is no greater commandment. Our love needs to be focused on God and neighbors, not on our treasures. In closing, I told you I wouldn't be long. It is somewhat ironic that the widow gave all her coins worth about a penny and placed her trust in God. While 2,000 years later, we meant our pennies and all our currencies with the words, in God we trust. It does sometimes for me, and I don't know about you, give me pause to think, in whom and what do we really place our trust? Do you still have those coins in your hand? I'm going to tell you these directions. During the collection, I invite all of us to imitate the widow and toss those coins, not only the coins, but your envelopes too. <laughs> And if you want to give a little more, that's two. <laughs> and the weekly offerings into the basket. Let this gesture be a symbol, a reminder of the two widows, faith, and a reminder of the two great commandments. A reminder of the widow's faith and a reminder of being open to God's call to actively participate in a deeper and more meaningful spiritual journey with our Savior, Christ the Lord. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to you, my precious Savior, I surrender all.